Hi and welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen and today I'm sharing some things I had never seen before moving to the UK. To give you some context, I am American, I grew up in America, specifically Florida, so it's entirely possible that some of these things can be seen or enjoyed in other parts of the US, but I managed a whole life there without seeing any of these things, so there will definitely be other Americans like me who are also incredibly unfamiliar with these things. I say this because sometimes I say things and then somebody will comment and they'll be like, well, I live in Philadelphia and I have a, I don't know, I was prepared to give an example of something people say, but I can't think of a specific thing, but basically, these videos are all generalizations based on my experience. So please do comment about your own experiences, but I'm I'm not saying that no American ever has experienced these things. I'm just saying that I haven't. Okay, anyway, on with the video. Number one, windows that open with a key. All of the windows I had growing up opened upwards like this rather than outwards like the windows I'm used to in the UK and you closed it from the inside with a little like lever, it's not really a lever, a little mechanism. When I realized that you needed a key to lock and unlock many of the windows we had in the UK, I was perplexed to say the least because what happens if you lose the key? What if I needed to get out during a fire from the inside and it was locked and I couldn't find the key in a panic. This has not happened to me yet. Um, I'm sure they're more secure, but I'm just curious. So I had never seen a key for a window before I moved to the UK. Next up is the combo washer and dryer. Everyone says this about the UK and Europe in general when they move here from North America. Having one machine that is capable of both washing and drying my clothes seemed incredibly confusing. How would it switch between two modes? I had these more when I lived in student accommodation. Today we have a separate washer and dryer because I'm American and spoiled, I don't know. But I do think there is something to be said for having separate machines as the combo washer and dryer never actually seemed to dry the clothes as well as a fully dedicated dryer. Um, but this video isn't about what's better. I'm just saying I had never seen or heard of a combo washer and dryer before moving to the UK. And now I have seen quite a lot of them. Next up is the British keyboard. I have an entire video on the differences between UK and US keyboards, so check that out if you're into nerdy stuff like that. But I hadn't even taken a second to think that keyboards might be different in different countries. So when I first used a British keyboard in the computer lab at my university in the UK, I was confused. I was confused by where some of the keys were, why I kept hitting the wrong ones, um, and I type without looking, so it was messing me up for a long time before I finally figured out the UK keyboard layout. Next up is someone putting on the parking brake, which also is like, is it called like the emergency brake in some places? Growing up in Florida and driving automatic cars, I swear to you, no one ever mentioned, no one ever mentioned this brake to me. Did it exist? Yeah, it must have in my car but no one ever talked about it. Never. Not one time. Not a single time. When I first moved to the UK and my husband kept putting on this parking brake, I was like, what are you doing? The car doesn't need your extra help to park. It's stopped. It's parked. Like, what, what are we doing? Um, it is, no, because you've got to put the parking brake on in a lot of places in the UK, which I now do religiously, but I had never given it a second thought uh, or even a first thought. I hadn't given it any thought until I moved to the UK. Next up is the electric kettle. People like to fight about kettles on the internet because it's horrifying to many British people that most Americans don't have one. But it's true, we do not really use electric kettles. We either heat water in the microwave or in a pan on the stove. I had never preheated water before. Like, if I'm cooking pasta, for instance, in the UK, I'll boil the water in the kettle and then pour it in the pan to bring to a boil on the stove faster. This is not a thing in the US. You just fill the pot or pan with water and let it boil completely on the stove. 
I will say that electric kettles are obviously superior when it comes to the speed of boiling water in the UK, but the voltage in the US is lower, which means it cannot boil water as fast in the US, so it's not entirely surprising the US hasn't gotten on board the kettle train. Um, I did know what a kettle looked like when living in the US, probably, maybe, but I had never actually seen one in person. Next up is roast dinner flavored crisps or chips, as we would say in America. Every country has some weird version of crisp or chip flavors that other people look at and think is disgusting. And for the UK, I'm not gonna say it's disgusting at all, um, but I had never seen roast dinner flavored chips before. Um, I hadn't even heard of like what a roast dinner would be. And it kind of seemed like, how is this entire crisp flavored like multiple foods all at once? But I guess it works and people buy it comment below and let me know, do you like roast dinner flavored crisps? Next up is corn on pizza, or as the Brits would say, sweet corn on pizza. Pizza toppings are fascinating to me between countries, and we're actually gonna do a whole deep dive between UK pizza and American pizza, or should I say deep dish dive, get it? Anyway, I had never seen someone suggest that you can put corn on pizza before. Um, but apparently you can. My husband loves it this way. It comes as an option in UK Pizza Hut. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's weird, but then why is it more weird than having other toppings on a pizza? It's not. I'm just not used to it, and it's something I hadn't seen before moving to the UK. Next up is the British flush. Everyone loves talking about toilet flushes, obviously. Favorite topic, that's why you're here. But did you know I had never seen this kind of toilet flush button until moving to the UK. I had only seen ones like this in the US, and actually, when I was in the US a few months ago, I did see a button type one in an airport, so they could be catching on, but the first time I used a UK toilet in Heathrow Airport, I literally took a picture of the flush button because I was like, what in the world is this thing? Next is a pull cord to turn on a light. It's a little bit old school, even in the UK, but when I first moved, moved, when I first moved to the UK, there was a pull cord to turn on the light in the bathroom in my in-laws house, and this was very strange to me. It has to do with regulations about electric connections in the bathroom in the UK, which is a whole nother video, but I had for sure never seen a cord to turn on a light. I swear to you, I panicked every single time I turned it off or on because you had to pull it really hard to get it to work. Um, and I was always afraid I was gonna break it. And actually at one point the cord did snap and they had to tie it back together. Um, I've never had a pull cord to turn on a light in my own home in the UK, but this is definitely something I had never seen in the US. So tell me, do you have a pull cord to turn on the light in your bathroom? The next one is a sad one, and not because of the thing, but because I hadn't seen the thing, and the thing is a crumpet. I had never seen a crumpet before moving to the UK. I definitely did not know what it looked like, uh, though I had heard of it as in tea and crumpets, but I could not have picked a crumpet out of like a baked goods lineup, if that makes sense. For those who are not in the know, Crumpets look like this, and they're basically the perfect vessel for butter after you toast them. And while I do not eat them often, when I do eat them, it is the best thing ever. Next is the blackcurrant flavor. So did you know that blackcurrant flavor is not a thing in the US? Blackcurrant bushes were actually banned in 1911 in the US due to a fungus it carried called white pine blister rust that threatened the timber industry. Cannot have that. So most Americans today have never eaten a blackcurrant, whether like in any, in any form, the actual berry in a jam and a sauce, nothing. The same fungus actually does happen in Europe. It's not exclusive to America, but Europe kept the blackcurrants and got rid of the white pine tree while America went the other way, which is pretty interesting if you ask me. And finally, rhubarb. Rhubarb is an interesting plant, technically a vegetable, but often eaten as a fruit. I don't entirely know what that means, but when I was researching rhubarb, a website said that, so we're gonna roll with it. Um, I had never heard of it. I like how sometimes I say I'm bringing you the most accurate information possible, and sometimes I'm like, 
I scanned this in Wikipedia in um, two seconds and added it into the video, restating it as fact. So this rhubarb segment, you guys, it's a little sketchy. Anyway, um, I had never seen or heard of rhubarb while living in the US. Now you can understand why so much research has had to be done. Uh, further investigation has revealed to me that possibly this was because I lived in the South and the climate in the American South, it's not good for rhubarb. Um, so it's more popular in the northern states, but it's still a relatively unusual ingredient in many parts of America and not as often used as in the UK. Now this brings me to the end of this video. Which of my answers surprised you the most? I'd love to know. Comment below. Uh, and thank you so much for watching.